Welcome everyone to another edition of On Your Own Reviews. Today we will be going a long way back. So long ago it takes place eight movies before to be exact. In an attempt so Disney can make more money. What movie am I talking about? Obviously Rogue One, a Star Wars story. The first side story in the Star Wars franchise, uh, which once again, uh, this actually, this movie actually happens before episode four, so this takes place somewhere before Revenge of the Sith, and actually it takes place right before New Hope. So the basic story is, what's happening is the Rebels have heard some buzz that the Empire is making a giant planet killer. And how they heard this is, one of the Empire's own pilots have uh, changed sides and is deciding to give up the information so that the Rebels will know. This leads to our main story which is of Jin Ursa who her father was one of the cre he helped create the Death Star and basically the whole story is a series of characters trying to meet her dad and get together and they decide after a little bit that they're going to join the rebels and then they have to go get the plans for the Death Star. That's the basic synopsis of the movie. This movie is okay. So let's get into the actual meat and potatoes of this review. The problems with this movie. This movie has no characterization. The first 30 minutes are characters running into each other on this small little planet. And the problem with that is there's so many characters. I'm not gonna lie, within the first 30 minutes we meet up with one, two, about like nine main characters. The only one, Jin is the only one we get any backstory of. Hell, half the characters, I can't even remember what their names are. Yes, and I know someone's going to feel free to drop in the comments. This is who the people's names are. Ask most people who watch this movie. They don't know. They wouldn't know. There's The only real people you know is going to be Jin, Ursa. It's going to be... K2. And it's going to be a Cassian. And the only reason I remember Cassian is because that's a uh, Commons character's name in John Wick Chapter 2. That's about it. Everyone else is just an archetype, literally. You have the blind guy, who they probably said his name, didn't catch it. His friend, who I'm pretty sure never had his name said in the movie. You have the traitor the traitor of the empire and you have uh, and then you just have like random soldiers like even the main bad guy the director I didn't even catch his name they said it a couple of times but it wasn't even it wasn't important at all and then there's <laughs> there's Solis Guerrera Forrest Whitaker's character Forrest Whitaker didn't get to do much in this movie, but I got a good laugh out of seeing him when you you see him at the beginning when he comes into Jin's story, and then you see him later on when he, you know he helps propel the plot to what it's gonna be. Oh my God, his outfit is hysterical. He is literally the black version of a mortal Joe from Fury Road, right down to the hair. He even has the breathing apparatus. There's a scene where he's talking to someone. He's talking to the, the traitor pilot. And he it's strapped to his chest. He takes it off, puts it on his mouth. <sighs> Breathes. Takes it off and does the most epic snap ever. He just lets it go and it snaps back to his chest. <laughs> I don't know who this iron is. But literally he's the black version of Immortal Joe. Not even down to... His, down to his skin color and down to his costume because both of them were black. 
it's, that's not a racist, it's just a comparison. That's all they did about him that changed. And he didn't really have much to do in this movie, did Forrest Whitaker, so. And that was that. There was that problem. Like, for the first half, there were so many characters being thrown at you that it kind of got a little dull-inducing. Like, I kind of felt a little nappy during the first minutes because you were being thrown in so many places, meeting so many people. It kind of got nap-inducing. You know, once you get the first action scene out the way, though, you, you know, you kind of wake up because that's what this movie kind of is. It is... Star Wars version of a war movie and when it does that it does that well but let me hold off on that for a minute then there's the CGI characters Disney has to be able to do this better uh, Leia when she finally comes in at the end and God forgive I, I understand the guy who the actor who played uh, Tarkian passed away many years ago, but their CGI faces are god awful. It was terrible. And every time I saw them, I couldn't help but laughing, or I just couldn't help but look at the screen and go 101000111001. All you saw was binary code. And they look so bad compared to everything else. And let's, now let's go into the good things about the movie. Good things about the movie is. The f well, one, the fact that, much like Force Awakens, it looks real. This is a movie that you can definitely tell when CGI is being used, i.e. The, the character faces. But for everything else, it's, you know, it's shot on location, they're using practical effects, and it looks really good. The fight scenes are amazing. The first fight scene you get a taste of, and it feels a little you know, grandeur. The last fight scene, which takes up, I would like to say, at least the last 40 minutes of the movie, doesn't get boring. Actually, the fight scene does more work with the characters than the actual beginning of the movie. The first hour and... The first hour is kind of, you know, setting up where everyone's going. And then the last half is the, the last 40 minutes of the payoff as you see the grand war, there's a war in space, there's a war on the planet, and everyone's moving around and it never gets dull for those 40 minutes. That part of the movie is excellent. And it actually has a lot of payoffs and it, it kind of makes you feel more for the characters than all their setups combined. So that part was very well done I have to say. I The battle scenes are great. Darth Vader, while he's not in this movie much, I think he's only in about four scenes, his appearance is excellent. It's nice to finally see Vader whip ass and not just be this slow, clunky machine that he is in A New Hope and, you know, Return and Empire. He kicks ass. I will say this, you can tell the age in James Earl Jones, who reprises his role as the voice of Vader, you can hear the age in his voice compared if you go back watch this and then watch A New Hope you can tell he's definitely got older and maybe they should have pump, punched it up a bit but it was perfectly you know great to just hear his voice as the voice of Vader again so that was very cool uh, but I will have to question one thing on the last fight scene apparently someone forgot physics in this because after his last fight scene he walks out into a after a plane and the plane is open to the vacuums of space and he just stands there like nothing I guess the vacuum of space got <coughs> destroyed between this movie and episode 3 because I mean episode 4 because it exists so th that just kind of made me laugh that was an that was a bad choice. They should have had the airlock shut around him and then have him look through a window at the plane escaping. But uh, this is a movie that also, you kind of know where you're going because you've already seen A New Hope. So the ending, while you kind of get where all the characters are going, still feels very good. 
so I'll give it a lot of credit on that. Um, I will also say this about a movie. The movie is very heavily helped by the mythology of Star Wars. If this would have been any other movie other than Star Wars movie, you probably would have felt every minute of boredom during the first hour because you have all these people being thrown at you and you have no idea who you are. The only thing that kind of gets you through it is the fact that you know what the rebels want to do. And you're leaning behind the rebels. This is a movie that definitely leans on heavily the mythology to hold up the whole story. That's why I, I don't rave about this movie. The action scenes are great. Characters not so much. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about the movie. Um, I'll give it an average review. It's it's good, but it's not great. It has its flaws, and their fl the flaws are definitely right in front of you. See, so I'll give Rogue One a Star Wars movie a seven. You know, you're gonna see it regardless. It's a Star Wars movie, so. I don't think you need me to say that, but as far as where it lands in, it's definitely better than anything of the prequels, but it's not better than the other four movies, so that's pretty much it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time at the movies.